Hello, my name is Colin Doyle, and I'm a consulting engineer with Juniper Networks. I recently recorded a series of videos for a customer of mine who's transitioning from Cisco switching in their campus to Juniper switching. In those videos, I showed them some basic configuration tasks and how to adapt certain elements of uh, iOS configuration to Junos configuration. And I couldn't help but thinking during the course of making those videos that they might be useful to other people. So now I'm recording a new video series that is, we'll say customer agnostic, for other people to hopefully help them if they're making that transition. Uh, as always, if you have any questions about any of this content or you have other things that you wanna see, leave them in the comments below. Uh, like I said, this is the first video. Uh, the uh, subsequent videos are gonna deal with how to approach the initial migration of configuration elements, uh, basically kind of a divide and conquer strategy. And then the videos after that will deal with specific sections of the configuration. Uh, I don't want any of these to be too long because I don't want folks that maybe are looking for specific content to have to search through one long video. So you know, we're gonna go through things like the, you know, setting up the systems elements, uh, interfaces, protocols, PoE, and I'm gonna break it all up so that you can just go directly to the spot that you need to be. And again, if there's something that I don't cover, please let me know. Now, in terms of the configuration that I already have on this Catalyst 3750 that's humming along in the room behind me, it is a basic layer two access layer device. So I'm not doing any kind of routing protocols and I only have one IP address configured on it and that's for management. The SRXB20 I have is going to be handling most of, you know, most, all of the routing. Uh, it is connected to the internet, it is doing NAT. I don't really have any security set up beyond the basic stuff because the focus here really is on the switch. So let's take a look at these devices. Here above me, you can see the uh, configuration elements that I laid out before I even started doing the configuration. Um, I basically created that list and then built the iOS config. Now I myself a long time ago came from a very heavy Cisco background. So there was a little bit of cobwebs I had to shake off uh, BTP mode transparent. Kept wondering why my VLANs weren't showing up, but I don't know, you know, it's a muscle memory. It all came back eventually. Uh, you can see here on the left, the configuration that I have for the SRX is starts here and ends here. Uh, you know, I've got my five VLANs. They're all routed here at that security gateway. And then I'm connected to the Cisco device using a LACP trunk with two ports. And then we can move on down here. We can start to see the things that I configured on the Cisco. Uh, most enterprises that I work with do have a standard template. So I've tried to replicate that here by having blocks of uh, interfaces kind of pre-configured for specific VLANs. We've got a CorpNet VLAN, which is intended for corporate traffic. We've got a guest VLAN, management, uh, a POS VLAN, which we would consider to be, you know, uh, IoT type devices, and then a voice VLAN. And the voice VLAN is the only VLAN that isn't explicitly configured on interfaces. Uh, we're going to be using the voice VLAN feature both in iOS and in Junos to apply that voice VLAN uh, to the interfaces that are configured currently for CorpNet. Let me go down, we can see some of the more other you know, configuration elements. We got the SSH access, uh, define a user, uh, loopback ACL, that's actually kind of, that's the Juniper brain working. Uh, we apply our uh, management filters to the loopback, with basically the gateway to the control plane. Uh, in this case, it's a access group. I don't know, I know there's like, depending on where you put in ACL, there's different names for it, which I always thought was weird. Uh, but anyway, it's applied to the VTY terminals that are providing the SSH access. Uh, we also have a message of the day, NTP, host name, spanning trees on by default. Uh, PVSD Plus, if you're using it, do some research on it, because if you plug it into anything else that's not Cisco, since it's proprietary, it can cause headaches. Uh, I won't get too deep into that, but it is a thing. Uh, PoE, it's on by default. And then, of course, how we built the LACP tunnel. And this bit here at the end, this is required log just to log into this uh, 3750 because it's sufficiently old that the SSH algorithms are out of date with the tools that I'm using. So I'm already on this iOS device here and I've got these Raspberry Pis up here as well. Each of these represents a, I already got this one logged in, um, a connection to one of the four non-voice VLANs. Uh, this is just done so that I have the ability to test the connections as we go along. Um, I can even show you kind of how that's, some of this config is already working here because I have an access control list that constrains 
uh, management of the catalyst switch to devices on the management VLAN, which is what Pi 6 is plugged into. And you can see where these Pi's are plugged into right here, which are these VLANs. Now, before we get to that, let's just look at this iOS device. All right, so scrolling from the top, I'm going to go through this real quick and then we'll wrap up the video. We'll move on to the how to approach migrating configuration. Now we've got our host name, we've got our enabled password and our username set up there. Go feel free to decode it. It's also in the notes that are here above me. It's just lab one, two, three. Those type seven passwords are hilarious. Uh, I see the VTP mode transparent, <laughs> one of those features that they tell, teach you about in your certification courses and then tell you to never use. Uh, and of course, we have to create a domain name. Uh, if we want to set up SSH, it's required to generate the key. And we can see that key here below. Uh, it is running PVST. This is out of the box. I'm not playing with it. Uh, and then our VLANs and then all of our switch ports. And we can see that we've got this first block here is going to have the voice VLAN defined. Interface range is a handy command when you've got this many interfaces. So we'll scroll through these real quick. And this is an area where when we get to the optimization video, uh, I can save you a lot of scrolling in Junos. Got our uplink trucks uh, coming up. Well, those are the WAPs right there. I don't have an access point plugged into this catalyst, but when we finally do get over to the Juniper switches, I do have an access point that I'll plug in. Message of the day, got our access list for SSH, and then we've got ah access class, that's it. We could actually see this working right now. This is the device that's plugged into the management interface. I do have to use this key algorithm bit here to use SHA-1 but I can use that and it'll log me right in. Now, if I go over to say Pi 5 here and do the same thing, where are you? Uh, I'll get rejected because that ah, ACL is doing what it's supposed to do. So that's where we're starting. Uh, I'm gonna wrap the video here. Uh, actually, I do have one more thing I wanna show you. If you are coming over from iOS and you're just learning Junos for the first time, there's a ton of free resources out there. Uh, we have a lot of free training. If you just go to learning.juniper.net, you can get access to you know, free kind of baseline, not, you know, professional level stuff, but, you know, basic training. Uh, talk, you can also talk to your account team. We have these books that are downloadable for free. This onboarding book right here is absolutely terrific and includes, uh, geez, did I leave that text up? No, I must have closed it. But there is a uh, Junos for iOS engineers book that is in there. Uh, and it's also downloadable uh, separately up here. Um, one of these, it's in here. Uh, it's terrific, and it shows you, you know, here's what a configuration looks like in iOS, and here's what it looks like in Junos, uh, which is kind of what we're going to be doing here. So thanks for watching. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time to join me today. Again, if you have any questions, comments, or want to see something, put it in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.